Hello, Kidney Warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, and this is another episode of Dadvice TV Live. And if you're new out there and this is your first time, go ahead and say hello and let us know you're new in the comments, like someone new right here. We have a great community. It's very supportive and very positive. And, you know, there's all sorts of information that we learn from each other besides my experience and from the information we get from our guest. Now, for those that are new, hey, look at this. Wow, Indiana, just a state over. Let me bring that up on the screen. Boom, hey, glad you guys are here. Um, for those that are new, let me introduce myself real quick. My name is James. I'm a kidney patient, not a doctor, not a dietitian or anything like that. I'm just a regular guy. And I spent a week in the ICU where I learned I had kidney failure. Doctors told me I needed dialysis and a transplant, but I never went on dialysis and I never got a transplant. And that was two years ago. What I did instead was I made diet and lifestyle changes. I stopped eating Burger King, McDonald's, Domino's, all those things that I just loved that were so bad for my health. I got rid of them. I stopped drinking soda. Bye bye, Dr. Pepper. And instead, I worked with a renal dietitian and I learned all about nutrition and started eating better, started walking, getting a little bit of exercise, started losing some weight, got my blood pressure under control, and my kidney health improved. No longer am I in kidney failure. I'm not even stage four. I'm now stage three, but more importantly, and my favorite part, I don't have a single symptom. No anemia, no headache, no brain fog, none of that stuff. I feel great. Now, today, we're going to be talking about kidney cleanses. Woo! What a topic. And we talked about this a little bit, of maybe two or three months ago, but we're going to share some more information, including some stuff that you guys might be a little surprised. Yeah, there's some products that do have some positive effects, not all bad out there. But right now, boy, I was scrolling through Facebook the last week and I noticed so many ads pushing kidney cleanses on people. And they may not always be the right thing for you. As a matter of fact, they're probably not. We're gonna talk more about that. But with us today to help us figure out what's okay, what's not, and what is what with kidney cleanses, our favor, renal dietitian, back again as she is every week. Give a big welcome to Jen Hernandez. Hey, Jen, how you doing? Hey, James. Hey, everybody. I'm doing very well. You probably noticed a different background. We are still in our move, still in the process, but um, <laughs> very grateful to have a warm place to stay. So, uh, you know, just doing well and rolling with the punches. <laughs> Awesome. Now, for those that are new, tell them a little bit about you, how they can get a hold of you, and what the heck is a renal dietitian? Yes. So I am a registered dietitian. I am board certified in renal nutrition, and I've been doing this for most of my dietitian career. When I was a very bright young dietitian, I was interested in preventive and wanting to help people stay healthy. Uh, I ended up getting into dialysis because I was so intrigued and honestly scared of the renal diet. It was a very, very intimidating diet. Even from when I was in my undergrad schooling, learning about the renal diet, it was so complicated. So I took on dialysis to learn that challenge of the renal diet and be able to teach it to people with kidney disease, specifically in dialysis. And then later on, I started working with the National Kidney Foundation in getting back into my uh, goal of prevention and helping people get screened for their kidney health to keep them off of dialysis. I was still working in dialysis again. And then I did finally decide to take the leap and do my own private practice because I really wanted to help more people and do things the way I have felt so passionate about getting them done and helping people and serving people and doing it directly there. So you can find me now at plantpoweredkidneys.com. That's my website where I have a lot of blog articles, a lot of information there for you. I do see people one-on-one, -on -one, but as I've said before, I am full with clients at the moment. So I can't take anybody new privately, but I do have other resources available, including my online course, which hint, hint, 
will be opening up in the near future. So stay tuned, make sure you check out the course and get on the wait list if you would like to learn more about that, where we've had hundreds of kidney warriors take the course and get so many great results. I'm so excited to be able to be a part of that and to see all of the success that has come from the people that have gone through the course. So that is really kind of up on the horizon. But in the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram at Plant Powered Kidneys. You can also join our Facebook group, which is another amazing free resource that mm-hmm. is available to you right now. You can find us on at Plant Powered Kidneys in Facebook. Just search the groups or search Plant Powered Kidneys and uh, you will come across us there. And that is where this amazing group of kidney warriors who shares their success, they share a lot of delicious foods that they make, recipes, other links and tips and ideas. And it is just a really, really wonderful, positive and motivating group of of kidney warriors that have come together to focus on eating a more plant-based diet. So that is kind of the big spiel of all the things that we have for you guys. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. And if you guys, you know, the new people out there, make sure you go and you join the Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook group. So much great information. I mean, Jen does little cooking demos. Other people put recipes and pictures of their food. Boy, you talk about you cannot get bored of eating plant based when you're getting ideas from everyone there in the group. Oh, and yeah. it costs nothing. It's fantastic. Yeah. And it's very positive, which is one of the things mm-hmm. I love so much about it. Because kidney mm-hmm. disease, it can it can get a little bit uh, tough on us. We got to look for those positive people to help us improve our quality of life and kick kidney disease to the curb. Exactly. All right. Oh, hey, look at this, James from Seattle. Hey, I moved to Cincinnati about two and a half years ago from Seattle. I owned a restaurant up in Kirkland called Picnics. It's no longer there because we sold it, but loved all the people there and we miss it. Both my kids were born in Seattle. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get right to today's topic because we've got so much to talk about today. So kidney cleanses. First, what is a kidney cleanse? So a kidney cleanse is really... I mean, okay, let's say a cleanse in general. A cleanse is something that is when a person is attempting to get rid of uh, substances that are seen as toxic or unhealthy from the body. Now, the kidneys are our cleanser of the body. It is our filter. It is what takes care of toxins and things that are unhealthy in our body. So the kidneys are the cleanser. Now, people with poor kidney health, they will come across, if you guys have seen anything, I'm sure you have, James, just like you were mentioning, you Mm -hmm. see a lot of ads, a lot of things pop up about kidney cleanses. So their marketing, all these kidney cleanses that you see are so on point, they know who they're going for because it is a, a fear tactic, essentially. It is something to say, hey, your kidneys are damaged, they need to be fixed. Don't worry, we've got the solution. It's going to flush them right out or take care of them. It's going to cleanse them and get get them right back in tip-top shape, whatever they say. There's a lot of promises. There's not a lot of answers. That's the problem. So they're going to look at things like bladder infections, kidney stones, any kind of kidney issue, and they're going to focus on that as being, don't worry, we can take care of this. We've got this pill. We've got this product. We've got Mm -hmm. this powder. We've got this drink mix. Whatever it is, you take this, you drink only this, you know, pay hundreds of dollars for this, whatever the case is, it might not be a hundred, it might be cheap, but it's still a matter of putting your credit card to them to say, sure, let's, let's give this a try. So when we talk about these kinds of things, like I mentioned, it can be certain foods or food, food plans. I've seen kidney cleanse plans. It can be drinks or supplements, herbs a lot of variety here. So it's, it usually comes along with some kind of plan um, or guideline or some kind of food restriction as well, which you guys know, I am really not a fan of food restriction. We always talk about what can you eat? What, what can you add into the diet? What can you include in your Mm -hmm. diet to feel better? That's always a more enjoyable way of looking at it. So that's what I like to focus on. Now, really quickly, before we get into a lot of these products and herbal things, all of this, 
I am not endorsing any of them. I mm-hmm. do not Same here. Find, yeah. And we both <laughs> should probably say, like, we're saying I was, this is I was. I, I forgot that. I was planning to say that, like, hey, guys, we're going to talk about some stuff today. We are not endorsing this. Oh. Some of it may appear to have some positive um, effects on rats or something like that. Exactly. Does it, doesn't mean it's going to be right for you. So exactly. always, always check with your healthcare team, that's your doctor, your renal dietitians, before yes. you add anything like this. And if you're using any of this type of stuff that we're going to talk about, you need to make sure your healthcare mm-hmm. team is aware of it because there can be interactions we're going to talk about. Yeah. And I would add really quickly too, if your doctor says, I don't know, that doesn't mean yes. That doesn't give Correct. you the green light because they don't know. It just means they need to research it. You need to research it. Um, it, it, it can't just end there. So keep that in mind. Okay. Um, oh, you can put up that picture. I oh yeah, you. I got it right this here. Is a great time. This is a what great is this time picture of? So this is a screenshot I took from a directly from a uh, kidney cleanse product. Okay. So this is something that's labeled as a kidney cleanse. So in this caution, that is on the label for adults only, not for pregnant nursing women, consult physician prior to use if taking medication or have a medical condition, especially (laughs) liver or kidney condition. I I love that. Especially kidney. (laughs) Right. Because the kidney and the liver, like we don't need to go too far into that, but this is again, the organ that is detoxing our body. This is the organ that is filtering unhealthy things it's taking care it's keeping the good stuff in getting out getting the bad stuff out so to say oh we're going to give you this thing and it's going to cleanse your kidneys but if you have kidney problems don't take like that right there they're they're marketing it to make it sound like it can help your kidneys Mm -hmm. but then directly on the label it says if you have kidney problems don't take this so yep i mean i i can't I can't say this enough, but, you know, check those labels, read the back, uh, Mm -hmm. read everything you can about whatever product it is that you're looking at. And they should be as transparent as possible with any information they have. Um, I don't want to go too tangential, but I will give an example. James and I have both talked about Renadil as a probiotic. They have posted on their website. They have their studies. They have the research they've Mm -hmm. talked about and how it is potentially a helpful product because they've actually studied it with people because it's a helpful thing. It's not yep. something that has already been seen as risky. So that would be an example of finding a supplement that has the studies that has the evidence to show that it could be helpful. But these other ones don't typically have that. And I dare you, I dare you, if you have a product that you're really interested in and you don't see anything there, email them, ask them for their research and Exactly. And I'll tell you, you. I did that both with, with Renadil. I emailed Kibo biotech. Not only did they respond, they said, Hey, give us a call. And I talked to a lot of people there. Um, I even talked to the, the CEO. I talked to a nephrologist that works Mm -hmm. with them. Same thing with the, the group that makes a pro renal plus D the multivitamin they're up in uh, um, a Dayton. They're like a 30 minute drive from me. I reached out to them. I've spoken to them on the phone. They've hooked me up with renal dietitians, with a nephrologist to talk about, Hey, this combination, if a company's not going to be able to do that stuff, ugh, I'm not going to be yeah. taking it. That's for sure. Yeah. It, it definitely makes me nervous. And then again, anything that's, that has kidney something in the title, and then mm. it, it says in the back end, if you have kidney problems, don't take this. It's like, that sounds super confusing, personally. Yep. So um, I just really wanted to kind of get that stuff out there as that disclaimer. Again, we're not endorsing anything we're talking about here. It's all about the research. And that's what I really want us to focus on is what is the actual research? What mm. have we found that's been proven? And how has that been proven? So, um, so basically, let's, see, let's, let's, start, let's start with what let's start with a, what you need to focus on before starting a kidney cleanse. Yeah. So yeah. What do we need to focus on? What we need to be aware of before we get into the long list of all the different uh, supplements and options there are. 
Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're getting enough calories and your nutrients before you start getting into a lot of these products. This can be a sign of not getting enough nutrition, not getting enough calories can be a sign of why you're not feeling good or can be the reason why you're not feeling good because your body is running on fumes. So that is something to be aware of even prior to going into anything with a kidney cleanse because you might already have a nutritional deficiency that is causing problems that a vitamin or even a change in your diet ideally would be what could help solve the problem for you. If you have any nutrient restrictions regarding foods or herbs or supplements, um, you just don't you don't want to put your kidneys in jeopardy. You don't want mm -hmm. to risk any further damage by taking a step because you guys know that once this damage happens, it's not a simple reverse fix kind of thing. It's 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 a long-term situation. So you really want to be careful about that. And if you have any kidney issues, which for those of you watching, chances are you or somebody you love has kidney issues, you absolutely want to have your doctor and hopefully dietitian in on the conversation when you're looking at these products and make sure that that conversation is open and that you, that you can have that talk. Mm -hmm. um, I know it can be hard and I, sometimes doctors will right away shut you down or dietitians even. I mean, I will admit I've had it before where people talk to me about this stuff and I'm just like, no, like I don't want to hear it because I know that they're just not, they're not the safest and they're not the greatest, but it, it is great to at least look into the research and look into really what's proven and what's out there. Because if it's coming up on your Facebook feed, if it's coming up on mm -hmm. your Google searches, it's, it should be addressed and we should be paying attention to it. And the more you know about it, the safer it'll be one way or the other. Yep. Now, now for a, a kidney cleanse, are there any benefits? There have been some benefits that we've potentially seen. And with that, with that, it comes from a lot of almost like, side effects of really what is what comes of them so it's not necessarily directly related uh sometimes i mean they'll talk about improving your energy improving your focus improving your digestion reducing inflammation sometimes they'll also talk specifics like lower blood pressure lower blood mm -hmm. sugars lower cholesterol or even weight loss that's really rampant in mm -hmm. the dietary supplement world is, is weight loss. Oh yeah. Supplements, right. That's all the time. So these things may happen. You might see, you might see some of these things, but again, um, it's something to be really cautious of, of mm -hmm. how it happens. Right. And, and, and at what cost, what, uh, what else happens? What is sacrificed with that? Yeah. Now, speaking of sacrifices, we mentioned a few of the risk earlier, um, what are other risks from these kidney cleanses? Well, you know, as I mentioned with these cleanses, when they tell you only eat this certain food, only take this certain product, only drink this supplement, whatever the case is, you're really at risk for nutritional deep, uh, deficiencies. And then again, you're running on fumes and even lower fumes at that point. So you're probably going to have really, really low energy fatigue. You're just not going to feel 100% because you're not, your body's not getting the nutrients that it needs. You took your car to the gas station and you put in a dollar and you left and that's, that's it. And that's what you're going to try to drive on is a dollar's worth of gas, which we know now is <laughs> nothing. Not very so, much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, actually maybe a better, a better uh, way to phrase this is you gave, you, you went into the gas station, you gave him $25, but you got a dollar's worth of gas. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you, and sometimes it's not gas. Sometimes it's water. Yeah, that's true. You're not you don't getting what, what they, you thought you got. You, you don't know what they put in your gas in in your car. You just know that you got to leave and you're good to go for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. So the other thing too, with this, when you do cut down on calories is that it can slow down your metabolism. And this is really a protective feature of the body that it knows that it's running on fumes and it's thinking, well, 
we can't do a lot. We can't, our metabolism, that's the engine. That's what's doing everything for us. And if you don't give it the energy that it needs to function, it's going to slow down. It's going to go into like a hibernation mode. And that can make it harder. If you do have weight loss goals, it can make it a lot harder to lose weight in the future. So creating this like yo-yo situation of putting out these other deficiencies and again, running on low, low energy is not going to be helpful in the long run. And that's mm -hmm. when I talked about like, you're, you might see a benefit, but what are you sacrificing in the future? Yeah. And one of the falsehoods that these cleanses rely a lot on is the concept, and this is not accurate people, that there are certain foods that if you eat them, they magically repair your kidneys or they magically improve mm -hmm. your kidneys. When you eat food, it goes in your stomach, there's acids, it gets broken down to nutrition. It can't really tell the difference between a green bean and a carrot and a piece of broccoli. It's just nutrients now mm -hmm. in your body. And your body then does what it does with those nutrients. So don't let them kid you or fool you by saying things like beets are good for you. This is made with beets. Beets have nutrients in them. You probably need some of those nutrients. The fact that they're a beet isn't doing anything magical for you. Because mm -hmm. once it gets your stomach, gets starts getting processed, your stomach's breaking it down before it even gets anywhere to be used. So be careful for that. I saw there were a couple questions people asking, hey, is this good for your kidneys? Is this good? That's one of those things that a lot of these um, cleanses try to, to, to prey on. Is that, aha, people think this is good for their kidneys, that this food, this single food is going to somehow repair something. And if you take it in the pill, it'll help you. So they're, they're, they use that to sell you stuff. Mm -hmm. So what does the research say about kidney cleanses? So <laughs> essentially, what research is there, really? Like we've, mm -hmm. we've talked about research with CKD, with nutrition, even in just like the general population, right? And how it's very, very difficult to do that kind of research. But there are very, very few studies done on any kind of kidney cleanse program. And sometimes those studies are a little skewed. They're not mm -hmm. the best type of study that's done. They might be paid by a certain company because they're looking for a certain outcome. So again, there's, they're swayed because this company wants to just say, oh, we did a study and here, here it is. So, uh, we've talked about Adam's ruins everything before that scientific, uh, or just Adam ruins science. That's a great yep. episode. It talks about the research and how that can get really, uh, hairy. So basically very, very bottom line with that. There's just no evidence that supports the claims of these kidney cleanses. There's nothing out there. There might be case studies and a case study is just a person that takes it and has results of some matter, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Or if you think about like a testimonial, you know, one person took it and then they said, this is what happened and I feel great or whatever the case is. That is just one person. You guys know everybody's different. Everybody's diet is yep. different. Everybody's body is different. Everybody's CKD, no matter what stage, no matter how it happened, everybody is different. So we can't take that case study and say, oh, well, if it worked for that person, it must work for this person. It must work for you. It must work for me. Not the way our bodies work. That's not the way it works. So we can't use case studies very well or, or testimonials. Again, we don't know the testimonials. Um, you know, we, we don't know the background story about that. We don't know yep. what happened there. So I would say just be careful, but the research does not have a lot of evidence to show that kidney cleanses are confirmed to be safe and good across the board. Mm -hmm. So now let's jump into the good stuff or uh, kind of the bubble popping. <laughs> okay. The different things that people use or that are in these kidney cleanses and remember everyone, we're not endorsing these, but we're gonna talk about what what data is there that yeah. you know that these things may or may not do. Yeah. So first one, we're gonna jump in the herbs because that's always a hot topic. Every day, 
I get tons of emails listing. What about this? What about that? What about that? Um, there's studies out there. People find them that say, hey, we gave this to some rats and their kidneys didn't decline anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's it's it sounds wonderful. We want to extrapolate that and think, well, if I take it, it's going to do the same thing. That's not how our bodies, how science works. So right. be careful. Right. All right. First one, dandelion root. Yes. Yes. So this is an herb, super popular, very, very common. I feel like I hear about this one all the time. Every day. Uh, people, yeah. People ask about uh, the teas or using the roots themselves to make teas or whatever the case is. The reason people are interested in it is that they claim that it helps with lowering blood pressure and helping with blood sugar. So it is also thought to prevent kidney stones by increasing urine. So basically acts as a diuretic in making more urine. Uh, It also has this uh, nutrient called inulin, and that is a nutrient that that they focus on that can help with lowering blood pressure and and blood sugar. So they're looking at that nutrient specifically into why it can be something that could help with blood pressure or blood sugars. But, yep, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Go ahead. I was responding to somebody else. Oh, okay. (laughs) Uh, I'm answering some of the questions in the chat. (laughs) Gotcha. Uh, So with the dandelion root, there are side effects and that can include having heartburn, having the runs, having stomach pain, having itchy skin. So if you're taking supplements, I do see this question a lot. Um, I have itchy skin. What does this mean? It could be phosphorus. That's a lot, oftentimes the mm-hmm. go-to. It can also be supplements. So in this example, that dandelion can cause itchy skin. So keep that in mind. And then also there are medications that interact with dandelion root. And this includes medications like diuretics. So if dandelion is acting as a diuretic, it's going to change the way that your diuretic medications are working as well. And that can be bad because diuretics are helpful. Excessive diuretics is not helpful. That is not Mm -hmm. helpful at all. It can also interact with antibiotics. And that is not, I mean, antibiotics aren't fun to take anyway, but why, why take something that's just going to mess them up, make you have to maybe restart an antibiotic course, Mm -hmm. something like that. Not, not anything fun to mess with. It can also mess with some of the cholesterol lowering drugs, uh, also birth control and depression medications, which depression medications are uh, pretty common in the CKD Mm -hmm. world. So it's something to know that a lot of these medications, diuretics, cholesterol lowering, and blood pressure lowering medications, are in, um, or I'm sorry, uh, depression medications, these common medications can be impacted with having dandelion. Yeah. All right. And number two, probably most popular that I get every single day, stinging nettle. Yes. Okay. I've heard this one a lot too. And the bottom line with it is we don't know how it affects kidney function. We don't know. And we do know that it interf- that it interferes with blood thinning drugs. It interferes with blood pressure medications, anti-inflammatory medications, alpha block- blockers, and finasteride. So those medication interactions, again, can impact your treatment plan and can impact your kidney function. We don't know what singing nettle does for the kidneys. We do know that it's high in potassium. A cup of stinging nettle is 297 milligrams of potassium. So if you're focused on cutting down potassium, if it's something you need to limit, I would highly encourage that you look at any and all supplements that you're taking because they can be quite high in potassium. Yep. Awesome. Well, now what about high, high, okay, guys, I'm awful at saying these words. I don't say them all the time. I can say it up here. <laughs> hydrangea, Hy- hydrangea, help me out. Hydrangea. I, I'm also kind of guessing on that one. Um, I don't say that one too often. I don't say any of these too often, thankfully. So the, there was a study with animals that showed that this had that it showed that they had less kidney damage, 
and possibly there is an anti-inflammatory effect related to the kidney cells damage in chemotherapy. It's a very, very specific thing. And also this is on animals, not on humans. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what it can do for, for humans. The side effects though, dizziness, a feeling of tightness in the chest, which is a terrifying thing to be feeling. Uh, and then stomach or intestinal upset. So stomach pain, intestinal indigestion kind of things. It's not been studied on humans. We don't know how it affects the kidneys. That's really the bottom line for that. So that's another one we can't say. We really can't say what's going on with it. Mm -hmm. All right. What about Sam Bong? Another one I've so, never heard of. I, I, I see it. I've seen it in labels. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I always investigate these things like, what's in there? Because I get all the scammers. They post mm -hmm. on YouTube in the comments about this amazing thing that cured kidney disease or helps kidneys. So I, I've seen this one before. So this one is, uh, it had shown to decrease the size of kidney stones and reduce the amount, the number of the frequency of formations. Uh, also, it was associated with potentially lowering blood pressure, but we don't know yet how it affects the kidneys. So we, we there's no long-term study with it. There's nothing to say uh, it will benefit. So with this one, I, I understand the temptation or the idea of decreasing the kidney stone size and, and reducing the number of times that kidney stones are formed. But this risk that is, um, the risk that comes from this is what happens in the long run. What kind, what is this doing to my body? What is this doing to my kidneys in the long run? So this is another one that's just, there's not a ton of information. Um, there is like an allergic reaction that can happen if you have mm. ragweed allergies. Mm -hmm. So if you do have ragweed allergies, you might have a, a, a reaction to this. So itchy skin is another type of side effect that you can get from this type of herb. Yeah. What about marshmallow root? Yeah, this one I find um, interesting. I've spoke to people in the healthcare field about this. Uh, some people even recommend it. Um, it has shown to be helpful in that it can lower inflammation, it can reduce inflammation, mm -hmm. but it also had an interesting effect with mice in this study that it actually decreased their kidney function. Ooh. Again, it's a study in, in animals, so we don't know. I mean, it could be totally backwards for us, we, but the thing is we just don't know. Uh, the side effects do include the stomach upset and dizziness. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard of it used as a sort of diuretic before using marshmallow root like a tea basically uh, but this is something that also has potassium in it it has vitamin a as well, well as we sodium. did a show about vitamin a maybe yes. two weeks ago or so yeah so that's something to keep in mind that this again all of these herbs all of these things that we talk about it's not like an extract. It's not where it's just one thing. There's there's other components involved and that's what we need to pay attention to as well. Even though we're not necessarily focusing on every single uh, piece or nutrient there, we do need to be aware, especially you guys with kidney damage, we're, we're not just talking about just sodium or just potassium. We're talking about sodium, potassium, phosphorus, magnesium, protein, carbohydrates, fat. Like we're talking about so many things here. And that's what you need to look at for these, uh, these herbs as well as we're not just looking at the big picture. You have to look at everything there. Yep. And Deb asked, Hey, she's going to mark marshmallow root off her list, but can she still eat marshmallows? Oh. Um, Yes, yes, you can eat marshmallows. I will say you want to check the ingredient list. I've noticed over the more recent years that they started adding phosphorus. So be careful. Oh. Um, I love the um, Smashmallow. Have you guys heard that brand, Smashmallow? No. It's like a snacking marshmallow and they do different flavors. And no, wait, wait, what's there between a regular marshmallow and a snacking marshmallow? To me, they're all snacks. <laughs> Okay, so the the regular ones are like in the bigger bags. You use them to make like Rice Krispie treats or something. Mm -hmm. The snacking ones, they have different flavors and they come in like a zip top 
bag. Oh. And um, yeah, I don't know. They're they're really good though. I really like them. I should have included them on the low sodium snacks that we talked about, but, but I just there's so many. There's so many snacks to think of. Yeah. But that one is definitely a good one. Um, <laughs> and they don't have phosphorus additives, so. Check. Oh, very you good. You can have marshmallows, most likely. Just check the label to make sure there's no phosphorus in the ingredients list. If there are, put it down, look at a different label. Yep. And and for those that are new, it looks like we got a lot of new people today. When phosphorus is an additive, you absorb it a lot mm -hmm. more than when it occurs naturally. So we want to be really careful. Read those ingredients. If we see PHOS, FOS, because it comes in a lot of different versions, yep. that's a sign that maybe we don't want this. My rule of thumb is if it's in the first half of the ingredients, it's a definite no. If it's more than twice in the ingredients, even at the bottom, that's a no. I'll allow it once near the bottom. That's my rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for everybody, it's different. I know some people that they have to, every single thing they have to get rid of because, um, their body's just really sensitive. And the ones that are in the bottom of the ingredient list are still absorbed 100%, even yep. though it doesn't seem like it's a lot, all of it will get absorbed. So definitely something to be aware of. Yep, so how about, because we got a big list here, juniper. Okay, so juniper is another herb that has a high water content and it is used as another type of diuretic, very similar to a lot of these herbs, which if you're kind of getting a feel, you know, there's, there's a trend evolving here, right? A lot of these herbs are used as diuretics. Mm -hmm. So this one in particular uh, has been said to treat uh, UTIs, urinary tract infections, and kidney stones, again, as a diuretic, creating, producing more urine. So it has this um, antibacterial compound called a terpenoid. And that's the active ingredient, so to say, they're looking at that may help with kidney function. So it did show that the juniper was able to increase urine amount without the loss of electrolytes mm -hmm. in rats that were fed juniper. So again, in rats, not humans, we don't know what it is for humans, but they found that using juniper could irritate the kidneys and it is recommended that juniper not be used to treat kidney damage or kidney disease. So there's, you know, with, with the whole kidney health and, and under mm -hmm. that big umbrella, we have chronic kidney disease, we have acute kidney injury, we have kidney stones, we have UTIs. There's a lot of these different functions with the kidneys. So just beware uh, when we look at like kind of these certain term. So it can help possibly with UTIs and kidney stones, but it's not good for chronic kidney disease. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip a few of these that are on our list and near the end, I'm going to tell you guys where you can get the complete list with all of Jen's thoughts, but I'm going to jump to the ones because we're, 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 it's, we got about less than 20 minutes left of the show. You guys, I warned James. I said, this is going to be a really long <laughs> article. There's a lot of stuff here. We got a long list, which is awesome. Yeah. But let me jump to some of the ones that people have asked about. Garlic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So and I love garlic. garlic it's in practically everything I eat. Too. Me too. So garlic is something that has been shown to help lower blood pressure. It may protect the kidneys in that sense. And they did find in rats, again, in rats that were fed garlic, that the kidney function uh, was improved or basically stabilized with the garlic. But a supplement of garlic is going to be high in potassium. So I, I wouldn't recommend using the supplement of garlic because, well, for one, we talk about adding more flavor to your food. Hello, mm -hmm. garlic. Like, exactly, get it wonderful. naturally. Yes, yes. And you'll still get the benefits. If you want, if you feel like garlic is too intense for you, roast it, roast your garlic, thank me later. Um, you can send checks to Kentucky and we'll be good to go. <laughs> I'm telling you, roasted garlic, it, it, roasted garlic changes lives. Awesome. Really All does. right. Turmeric. And this is a okay. big one. Yes. So we did talk a little bit about this in relation to ginger when we asked, when we talked, had that conversation about ginger being good for kidney disease. So turmeric is the, uh, it has the active ingredient, so to say, that's curcumin. 
So this has been shown to lower inflammation. This is something curcumin is that active ingredient. I oftentimes recommend to clients as a supplement because the curcumin, we're taking that active ingredient and we're bumping it up with a, a safe amount, but also we talk about adding it in the diet too. So adding turmeric in the diet can be helpful. It, we, there was, um, let me get this right. Okay. So in some of the studies, it was seen that it helped in preventing the plaque buildup in our arteries. So basically cardiovascular health, keeping healthy blood flow, keeping lower blood pressure, that kind of thing. It also showed reducing protein losses and improving kidney function. Again, you know, it's just something to kind of keep in mind. This one I feel a little bit better about because there's more, there's more research out there when it comes to curcumin. Um, I also love the fact that it's a spice and uh, it's something that you can add to your diet easily. And you, it doesn't take a lot adding it to the diet. Mm -hmm. We talked about golden milk making oh, that yeah. recipe. And you guys all have a link for that as well. It's on my website too. Really, really easy and so good. And I love it as a nice warm beverage. Um, but you want to keep in mind, turmeric does have potassium and phosphorus. So you really want to be careful with how much. And that's where sometimes the actual supplement itself can go, can help. Um, can help out, but I will do a little bit of a caveat here and say, if you have anemia, you want to be careful with turmeric because anemia or because the turmeric might impact or prevent your anemia from improving. So like taking iron supplements in that case. So again, all of these, even though some of them I'm like a little more positive about, mm -hmm. I'm still saying you want to check with your doctor. You want to check with your, your dietitian. You want to get this cleared by your team to make sure you're on the right plan. Because you don't want to yep. be taking something that could hurt you or just not do anything. Or and I like using some of these as an ingredient in a meal where yeah. you're using them for flavor and maybe getting a little bit of benefit. Taking pills, extra mm -hmm. pills to me that I don't necessarily need that really aren't going to do anything except lighten my wallet and could cause more damage or other issues. Yeah. I have no interest in that. So yeah. I... I Turmeric uh, is one of the ones that I use. I love adding it into stuff, a little bit of a, a different flavor, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, as long along with uh, <laughs> garlic, which goes into practically everything. If, if vampires yeah. ever existed, I'd never know because I, I probably give <laughs> off garlic and they avoid me <laughs> like the plague. <laughs> you have a very safe radius. <laughs> yes. So, so let's jump onto some popular foods that um, are recommended yeah. for kidney cleanses. Kidney beans. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of interesting to think this bean that's shaped like a kidney has been shown to potentially be helpful with kidneys. So it provides fiber, which is really, really good for us, good for our gut health, and it is a plant-based protein. So people that are worried about not getting enough protein, well, first of all, remember everybody on, uh, anybody with kidney disease will have likely some variation of protein in their diet, depending on a number of factors of what's going on. Um, so it's good to keep that in mind first off, but kidney beans, uh, they provide just a lot of great nutrition in them. And people do ask about beans and phosphorus, but mm -hmm. the phosphorus that is in beans cannot be absorbed very well. So it's only absorbed by, um, I want to say 60%. I don't have all the numbers memorized, you guys. It's much but, lower um, than the, the additives, yeah. which are 100%. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you get a lot more benefits from the other nutrients in the beans. Mm -hmm. So just be aware, if you do need to limit your phosphorus, know that it's in there. But again, it's not the very first thing I would look at when it comes to your phosphorus. Yep. What about, here's one that, I, when I was diagnosed, I had to give up because the portion was so small for me. Watermelon. Okay. Yeah. And then you talked about adding the salt to it. I know. I, <laughs> I, I grew up you know, traveling. My parents were in the military and you, you pretty much used the watermelon to hold your salt. You just mm -hmm. coated it, ate it. But I know there's a lot of, uh, I think it's potassium. There's a lot of fluid and I'm mm -hmm. used to devouring a watermelon, the big mm -hmm. ones, not, not a slice. I'm not a slice yeah. person. I was a <laughs> full watermelon person. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's a hard that's a hard thing to change, especially if you have to, if you have to limit your potassium. Yeah. So watermelon is very hydrating. You you said it yourself. It mm-hmm. has a lot of water in it by name. So it has shown to potentially increase the amount of urine, but then also help with levels, balancing the levels of your phosphorus, of your calcium, even oxalate and citrate as well. The nutrients that are also found in watermelon have also been shown to help protect the kidneys from damage. So lycopene, if you guys are familiar with lycopene, it comes in a lot of red foods like tomatoes. Cooked tomatoes are really rich in lycopene. Lycopene has been found in rats to lower inflammation. So it has a protective effect. Um, But again, it's high in potassium, especially if you are a watermelon guy, watermelon gal. So you want to be careful with that. Um, But again, it's not, I I absolutely am somebody that I'd I'd rather get away with a little bit of it than eliminate Mm -hmm. it entirely. So if you For me, it's just hard to stop at just a- Yes. Yes. A normal slice or a normal <laughs> serving. Yeah. Uh, and, and I used to have bad fluid retention. And my my shoes didn't fit. My knees went straight down to my ankles. They didn't curve in. My mm-hmm. fingers were all bloated. So I had to be really careful with yeah, watermelon. Yeah. So I just, I said goodbye to it. I haven't had it since in it. You know, I kind of, you know, now I can. You know, I'm, my, mm-hmm. my kidneys are much better. Um, I just couldn't imagine trying watermelon without a ton of salt. <laughs> I, I've i never had it with salt. I can imagine it's good. Um, oh, I love it the way it's it good. Is. Oh, I love it good. the way it is. Yeah. All right. What about <laughs> pomegranate, the extract, and the juice? We hear a lot yes. of those as being something that helps cleanse our kidneys. Yes. So it has the antioxidants. It has the flavonoids that give it that purple, that dark, rich color. And it's those, it's that color. It's the nutrients that have that color is what may help prevent kidney damage, but also can help prevent with heart, prevent heart disease. So the pomegranate extract itself can help with preventing kidney stones and also increasing urine output. So that's something to make sure that you're staying hydrated. It's going to help you with that urine production. Um, So that is one of the things that helps in decreasing kidney stones is being able to go to the bathroom more frequently. So the antioxidants that are in the pomegranate can help with filtration. They can help with blood flow. They can help with increasing your kidney glomeruli, which are the filters themselves. Um, And it showed regenerated kidney tissue in rats. So pomegranate, I think has a lot of great benefits to it. This is not something where you need to go down a whole bottle of pomegranate. It has, uh, it has potassium in it. It's something to be aware of. And again, it's not something that you can just um, take this food or take this certain ingredient or nutrient and assume it's going to fix everything. But, um, oh, and then another thing too, there was, uh, there was evidence that just in a small amount of time, it's not going to do anything. This is something that really takes a longer term commitment. So finding a way, finding recipes that you enjoy with pomegranate to have over the long time, that's going to be more beneficial. So that's what you want to pay attention to. There was a study done um, that showed people on hemodialysis felt better after having some pomegranate juice. So, and this was again, after a longer term study, Mm -hmm. but you know, it's something to think of. And again, this is something that has a lot of nutrients in it and is something that you absolutely can. You can go to the grocery store and it's not a, it's not a hard thing, especially right now. It's not a hard thing to find pomegranates this time of year. So definitely. My wife just got some and they were gigantic. I I've never, it's another list of things I've never tried. (laughs) I've never tried them. I've had the juice too tart for me. Yeah. It's like cranberry (laughs) juice. Yeah. Now speaking, here's what, here's a food that is something I actually have learned to love because it helps. I I, I feel it helps me with uh, um, joint pain, cherries. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And we see those in a lot of the, the, the kidney cleanses. Yeah. I mean, I think, 
cherries are great. They're a kidney friendly food. You can absolutely include them in your diet. The cherries have vitamin C. It also has these poly, these polyphenols, which are a, a nutrient that helps with lowering inflammation. Mm -hmm. So again, eating cherries over the course of a longer term, it's not like a shorter term thing eating them over the course of a longer term, just including them as part of your healthy diet can be really yeah. helpful in preventing cardiovascular disease and helping with type two diabetes. There isn't any evidence as far as kidney health when it comes to cherries. So keep that in mind. It's not, not, uh, not a kidney solution, but mm -hmm. if you have cardiovascular disease, which if you guys talk with your doctors, if you're on a statin, your doctor might say, I want you on the statin to prevent cardiovascular disease. Well, hey, how about some cherries? Can I have that as well? And see if your diet change will also help in preventing cardiovascular disease. But yep. keep in mind, cherries do have potassium. And I personally, I feel like cherries, so cherries to me are like watermelon to you. Like I can go through cherries all the time. And <laughs> I, I don't even I just think need a few it. of them. I keep them in the freezer. I buy them frozen yeah. and I'll mix them into something to get that mm -hmm. little flavor. Um, I love them, but I could not eat a ton of them. It takes oh just gosh. a little I, bit for all me. All day, all day for me. I could do cherries all day, but they are, they, they do have some potassium. They're like a moderate potassium food. Um, there are some medications. I don't have the exact ones, but there was a, there was a study found that cherry juice could impact certain medications. Mm. So um, just just keep it in mind. And they did show that the interference with a medication caused acute kidney injury. So Ooh. that's something to be aware of. And again, not something to just dive into head first is something to, um, we got to look at a little bit more. I do have links for those. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you guys want to look at more information, I have a lot of this available for you. Yep. So I'm going to do one more. We, okay. I, I'm going through the list. There's like 40 more. Yeah. <laughs> we'll never get to them all, but guys, yeah, we're going to do no. one more. And then we're going to tell you where you can get this list with all the information. Seaweed that I see Seaweed. it all the time in, oh. in these supplements. Yeah. It, um, I mean, I guess just because I was in Hawaii, I think I was a little, I love it. I think it's so good. Um, but it is, it, it, for some reason is becoming really popular with the whole idea of kidney cleanses. It has a lot of great nutrition to it. I do, I do like the nutrient composition and the benefits of it. There was a study done on mice who had brown seaweed, which I'm not entirely familiar with. Um, I don't know all the types. I like it, but I don't, I'm not a seaweed connoisseur by any means. So, um, <laughs> but in this study that showed that mice who had brown seaweed had reduced diabetic kidney damage. So, um, there are other types of seaweed I'm more familiar with like spirulina. If you guys ever see a spirulina powder, that kind of thing, or chlorella, those are powders usually that you can find. Just beware that they do have protein. Um, they they're they've been no, they've been thought of like eliminating uh, heavy metals, but I think there just needs to be a little bit more research on that. And they are high in potassium, so they that's just again something that can add up really really fast. Personally, I just like a little bit of seaweed added to um, added to any kind of thing that you like to have a little bit of a salty flavor to, cause it gives that, that, that salt that comes from the sea. Um, I think it just adds a really, really unique taste. So I like it. Cool. Now for everyone out there, this list is so long there. It would take us probably two and a half hour show <laughs> oh, and I've got, I've got to go pick my kids up <laughs> at the top of the hour, <laughs> but Jen has a blog post, a very, the longest blog post I've ever seen you create. There's so much research <laughs> that went into this. Yes. Tons of information. It's like a mini book yes. that you can find at Plant Powered Kidneys. Let me kind of put my finger right there. Plantpoweredkidneys.com. You can go there. There's also a link in the description of this video on YouTube. If you go down the description, there's a link directly to the blog post 
where you can learn more about different kinds of drinks, cranberry, different vitamins. You're talking about uh, omega-3, magnesium, B6, apple cider vinegar. So much great information in here. Definitely go over to plantpoweredkidneys.com and take a look at this blog. You can print it out. You can bookmark it. And we had a lot of new people today asking a lot of questions about kidney disease, not related to today's topic, but I don't want you to get lost. Um, go to dadvicetv.com right there, and you can use the search. Most of the questions that have been asked, or practically all of them, Jen and I, or a different renal dietitian, or a nephrologist and I have videos probably answering the majority of the questions that were asked. Um, there, and just to kind of quickly touch on some of them, there is no life expectancy. If you're, you know, um, I was, when I was diagnosed, they said, if I didn't go on dialysis, I'd, I'd be gone in 45 days. That was over two years ago. Never went on dialysis. I've gotten healthier. My family doctor said, don't listen to those people at the hospital. They're wrong. I can help you. You don't have to worry about your life coming short because of kidney disease if you can live healthy. And really that was the secret, live healthy, eat healthy, be more active, lose weight, get my blood pressure under control and keep it under control. So don't worry, there's there's no life expectancy. And I know you see them out on the internet, three years, five years, it's all BS, random guesses. I got videos talking with uh, different nephrologists about that confirming. There is no number. Do your best, be healthy, work with your healthcare team. And no one knows how, how long you can go before you may need dialysis, before you know other issues may appear. And most kidney patients end up with heart problems. That's our number one issue that we really have to be careful of. And there's so much we could do with diet. So I definitely wanted to touch that because I know uh, as a new kidney patient, that was one of my biggest questions. When I saw that come by on the comments, like I got to make sure and, and, and touch on that. All right, everybody. If you haven't subscribed, please jump over to YouTube and subscribe to the Dad Vice TV channel. Click the little bell icon. Then whenever I schedule a new show, you'll get a notification and it'll be right in your email and you click the link and boom, you're right there. You'll know when. We're talking about what, which is fantastic. This is great information. You got a real renal dietitian right here sharing her information. <laughs> we get all sorts of other experts here. Also, there are some questions about the artificial kidneys. People were saying, hey, James, what do you know about that? I had the guy who's leading the team creating that here about two weeks ago, Dr. Shuvo Roy from UC San Francisco. Francisco, yes, I don't know which one. <laughs> we did a, a great video talking about it. Um, just to let you guys know, watch the video. It's about 10 years away. They've solved all the technical issues. Now it's just funding and testing and getting approval, but you don't have to wait a full 10 years. They're taking part of that technology and they're creating a device called an iHemo, which is something for home dialysis. We're probably five years or less from that. And it is awesome. That's Definitely so check out that video. Oh yeah, I was so excited to have him here. And actually I'm working with his team. I was just talking with them on Friday and yesterday. Um, we're gonna do some, some stuff together, get some fundraising, help drive awareness so that we can make sure that artificial kidney gets what it needs to become a reality. Cause it's gonna change yeah. the lives for people all around the world. All right, everybody. Thank you, Jen, for being here again. I'll see you next week on Tuesday. Thank you, everybody. I'll be back here in two days with Dr. Butt. Not sure what we're going to talk about yet, but he always <laughs> has awesome stuff. He's a nephrologist for you, those of you that are new. He's hilarious, has a lot of, of energy like me. He'll be here this Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so just one hour later than the show today. All right, everybody, I appreciate all of you being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye everyone.